In this unit, we're going to be studying area. Now, we're going to begin this by looking at the areas of parallelograms and triangles and the ways of calculating those. So let's begin with area of a rectangle. This is theorem 10-1, and it states that the area of a rectangle is the product of its base and height. You see this as A equals B times H. Now, some people also give this as length times width or other characteristics, but the idea is the same. Now, on a rectangle, the nice thing is that we have the angles and everything set up for us. The area of a parallelogram, theorem 10-2, reads as follows. The area of a parallelogram is the product of a base and the corresponding height, A equals BH. Now the formulas on these come out being the same. The difference is in the execution of the design. For a rectangle, we know that the sides all meet at right angles. But for a general parallelogram, we do not have that assurance. So when we are designing the calculations for area of a parallelogram, such as this one, we just have to make sure that the height we take, straight as I can get it here, is perpendicular to the base that we have measurement of. Whereas, again, with that rectangle, we automatically have those right angles set up. So we can use this to calculate different dimensions and the areas from different perspectives. Let's take a look at a couple. Shown here we have two different parallelograms and we're going to calculate the height or sorry the area for each of them. For the first one we start by writing down our formula A equals B times H or area is base times height. So our area is going to equal the base which base doesn't always have to mean the bottom but we know we have this base height relationship so it's whichever two sides meet at a right angle or two dimensions given. So if this is my base and this is my height we have to have this right angle. So our base in this case is 5 inches and our height is 4 inches and we give this as 20 inches squared. Area is always going to be given as a dimension of squares. Now you don't always have to write in the inches. You could just as easily have written A equals 5 times 4, which is 20. Just remember to put on those dimensions at the conclusion. Second one. Area again is equal to the base times the height. And here we're looking at the only right angle displayed is in this location so our base and our height never actually intersect it's more of an altitude concept and we take that length of the base the two centimeters and multiply it by the height of three and a half centimeters even though those don't match each other in location so running those calculations the base is two the height is three and a half Multiplying those, we come out with the area of 7 centimeters squared. So we begin with our most basic shapes of the quadrilaterals. Next, let's look at triangles. The area of a triangle, theorem 10-3, reads, The area of a triangle is half the product of a base and the corresponding height, or A equals, in this case, 0.5 BH, or just one half BH. And the reason for this is that if we start with a random triangle, the way that we derive the area for its height, or its, the formula for its area, is that this is in reality simply half of a parallelogram of some sort. So we would find the area of the parallelogram, that's my base times height, and we cut it in half. Now using that, let's calculate the area of this triangle here. So again, it has to be a corresponding height. These have to meet at right angles. So A equals one half base times height. So in this case, we have one half, the base is one foot, and the height is five feet. So multiplying that all through, we get two and a half feet.
feet squared. Now being able to work through systems or through these formulas in order to calculate these dimensions is useful. But what happens if we get things that are a little bit irregular? On the left here, we have a diagram of a parallelogram, and we could easily find the height. But what I want to know is what is the length of DE. Now in order to calculate this, what we're going to do is find the area of the figure to begin with. So area equals base times height. The base and height that we have that correspond to each other is a base of 13 inches and a height of 9. Now multiplying those together, we come out with a total area of 117 inches squared. Then, going back, we could also say that the area is a different base and height. So this 117 square inches is equal to our base of 9.4 and the height, which is line segment DE. So dividing this, we would come up with the length of DE being approximately equal to 12 and 4 tenths inches. So find what you know or use what you know to find the area and then backtrack to find the piece you're missing. Now what happens in the second diagram if we have a shape that's made up of a composition of other shapes? How do we find the area of this overall pentagon? Well, you can see the pentagon is made up of a square and a triangle, even an isosceles triangle. So what we would have to do is the area of the figure, area of the pentagon, is equal to the area of the square plus the area of the triangle. So calculating this out, the area of the square is going to be a base of 6 times a height of 6, and the area of the triangle is 1 half the base of 6 and the height of 8. So we get 36 plus half of 6 times 8 is 48, that would be 24. Adding these together we get 60 inches squared for the in total area. Now, just out of curiosity, looking at this figure, what would happen if we doubled the size or the side lengths of this square? What would be the resulting change to the area of the composite figure? Well, if everything is increased proportionately, what we have to do is start looking at dimensions. Because area is a second dimension figure, whatever we multiply one side length by, we're going to square that amount. So the area of this larger figure is going to be 2 squared times the area of the smaller one. So 2 squared is 4. The area of the smaller one is 60 inches squared. So what we come up with is 240 square inches for the enlarged figure. So if we're looking at volume, which we will be studying, you would multiply everything by the increase of size cubed. If we're just looking at perimeter, which is a one-dimensional concept, we would just multiply it by that increase of dimension. So going to be using these concepts as we move forward. Make sure you have good notes and are ready to use these going on.